When it comes to assessing adults who show up in our practice for expansion therapy, the first thing we'll do is we'll take a look at what problems you're actually having. Sometimes the chief complaint will be my jaw hurts, my neck hurts, I get headaches, or more of like a TMD, TMJ type presentation with a lot of pain. Or they may be people who are having trouble with their sleep. I wake up feeling tired, like I really never slept well. Most of the time, it's a combination of these two things. The root cause issue for most of our adult patients is underdevelopment. That is their jaws when they were young, didn't grow forward enough and wide enough for the teeth to have enough room to like fit comfortably and bite comfortably. Our teeth and jaws, the way they align, should create a point in space where all our head, neck, and jaw muscles can actually come to rest. If our bites are dysfunctional in a way where we can't close our mouths in a neutral, comfortable way, it's obviously gonna create a lot of tension. The same underdevelopment will create a situation where our tongues don't fit in our mouth. Our tongues are actually supposed to easily fit up on our palates. We're supposed to achieve light suction. And when we go into deep sleep, our tongues are not supposed to fall back into our throat and get in the way of oxygenation and breathing. That's the reason why our patients are having obstructive airway conditions and they're getting poor sleep and they're clenching their teeth while they're sleeping. What will occur is when that tongue goes back in the throat, that tongue will get in the way and people will roll over to the side, they'll clench their teeth, they'll get a little gaggy, and that's why we're seeing bad sleep and jaw pain. So for most of these patients, with the underdevelopment being the root cause of their problem, the big question becomes why did these people underdevelop and how are we gonna get their mouths and jaw spaces to grow so we can get a better bite and we can get better airways so people can breathe better and sleep better. So the first thing we do is we will do a 3D x-ray called a CBCT or a cone beam. That'll show us the size and shapes of the jaws. It'll show us the tongue posture. It'll show us how big the airway is. And then we can begin to get an idea. Do we have a patient that's a little bit small? Do we have a patient that's a lot small? Is it the mouth that's small? Is it the airway that's small? Are there any issues in the nose that, where there's some obstructions in the nose where that's gonna prevent them from breathing properly through their nose? Are patients that are mouth breathing, sometimes maybe mouth breathing because they can't breathe well through their nose. And expansion will actually get the palate wider and our patients will breathe better through their nose by a lot. But sometimes there can be things inside the nose from trauma, poor development, where surgical correction may become necessary. Usually not though. Once we finish with the CBCT, we'll have an idea of how small our patient is. Sometimes we're surprised that their growth and development needs to be a little bit bigger, or they may be so small that they need a lot of expansion. And the amount of expansion that people need in their age dictates the kind of expander that they're gonna need to correct their condition. If we have patients where their jaws need to be like 10 millimeters wider, they're certainly gonna be a candidate for bone level expanders, such as mass be aligner protocol. If the person's palate is maybe four, five, six millimeters too narrow, they could actually be a candidate for a homey block or a DNA appliance. Of course, we're gonna take a look inside our patient's mouths. When we're looking inside our patient's mouths, we're looking for lip ties, buckle ties, tongue ties. When we're kids, our tongue should be putting outwards pressure on our mouth, and that's gonna help our mouths grow to be the right size and shape. Lip ties, buckle ties, muscle attachments on the outside, if they're too tight, they'll be pulling back, and these are things that we need to address so that as we're doing our expansion, we're gonna be getting good results without this tug of war. And at the end, when we get a result, it's gonna be stable because if we don't address the things that mess things up to begin with, or at least some of these things, things can recur and things can revert back to some of the same problems we had when we were kids. We'll also take a look at our adult patient's bites. What's supposed to happen is we're supposed to put our jaw joints in the right position and we're supposed to close our mouths on that path without dislocating our jaws and we should be able to hit teeth evenly on both sides. A lot of our adult patients, when they open up their mouths, their jaws will deviate to one side or the other side. 
and they'll say that their jaw joints pop and click. And what's occurring is when their jaws are in the right place, they're closing, they're hitting one side, people are gonna memorize how their teeth fit. And if they have to close sort of sideways to make contact on both sides, that's how we're gonna close to eat, swallow, and everything else. And if we have these people who are constantly dislocating and re relocating their jaws to chew, function, and swallow, and do everything that they do, they're using muscles on one side of their head differently than the other, and that can translate into a lot of tension and pain. And these are all things that we need to note and correct. We're also looking at the dimensions in which our patients actually need development. Some of our patients need to grow a lot forward. Some of our patients need to grow a lot wider. Most of the time, it's a little bit of both, but sometimes it may be more of one than the other. And these are things that we need to work into our custom designs for our appliances. Sometimes it may be the relationship between the top jaw and the bottom jaw. If the top jaw is sitting out and the bottom jaw is sitting back, you know, a lot of our patients have this retronathic presentation or, or reverse jaw presentation. We actually need to incorporate something in the design for our appliances that will get a different amount of growth between the top jaw and the bottom jaw. And it may need to get the bottom jaw to move a little bit forward. These are all things that we're gonna note during our assessments. We're also gonna have all our adult patients working with a myofunctional therapist. All our patients who come into our office get evaluated by our myofunctional therapist, Maria, if not working with another outside therapist that we work with. And what she'll do is she'll take a look at the tongue, see if it's tied, look for buckle ties and lip ties, and see all the things that we need to like work on. And that myofunctional therapy plan needs to be customized and tailored and synchronized with the appliances that we're doing. As our patient's mouths are getting bigger, there's more space for the tongue, and we can't pretend like the myofunctional therapy plan is independent from the structural plan with our expanders. All our patients are gonna leave the office with a customized treatment plan. There's gonna be some form of expander that's gonna get the structural growth and development. We're gonna have a list of ties or tethered all tissues that need to be released. We're gonna have a plan in place for the myofunctional therapy, and it's all gonna to work together. We do all these treatments in our office. Whether you need a little bit of expansion or a lot of expansion, we can handle these things and we'll let you know what we feel is the best thing for your case.